welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. President of Liat Workers Union SVG, Jeremiah Howard, is questioning why the former workers of Liat 1974, Heron St. Vincent and the Grenadines, are being treated with less regard than their colleagues in other countries who have already started receiving severance payments in some form following the collapse of the airline three years ago. Discussing the matter on SVG TV's Viewpoint program on Sunday, Howard said St. Vincent and the Grenadines has paid its dues to Liat and the former workers, 41 to be exact, are in limbo three years on as to their severance payment. We haven't heard. Um, to make a comparison, Bobby, this severance pay is um, about 10 million Bajan. St. Lucia is 4 point something, I think. Grenada is 2.6 million EC. Mm. Ours is 1.1 million EC. So we have really basically the smallest in terms of severance pay. And we, we really, St. Vincent really and truly would have uh, from historical data was Babel St. Vincent was our number, Liat's number one route mm -hmm. because for obvious reasons we didn't have the international airport right. Right? so we were always dependent on Liat. Right. So right. By, 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 in so many ways St. Vincent have paid their dues to Liat. I mean it was more than an airline, it was yeah. like a family, it was right. like a culture, it was like the way we, we unite and it's very um, discouraging and it's, it's surprising it's discouraging it's conflicting as to why we are being treated like this. Um, in some cases, it's not even, it's gone past, it's not gone past the money, yes, we need the money, but I mean, there, there needs to be some form of acknowledgement that at least, yes, I'm listening. We, 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 feel, we feel as though we're not being even listened to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What would it hurt though to, to, to try another round of, of um, getting an audience, even with, with the Minister of Finance and, and so on? Because I, I think we, we owe we owe it to our workers though. I, I again spanning from the nineties back, I I, I, I mean I, I could almost say I, I know who worked at Liat, you know, and, 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 and saw the hard work. And and this is despite and the challenges you had over the years, especially at peak time, Carnival, Christmas, mm -hmm. etc. You know, um, so I agree with the general sentiment um, that that it, it was more than a a, a business. It was a, as, as the prime minister may say, it was a public good. Yeah. You know, so Jerry, would it hurt to begin another round of? No, of course not. Audience? I mean, we are we are open. We are open for competition in time. For Forty-one um, workers are no, still not. No, we are open for. Meetings of communication mm. at the at the Minister of Finance. Well, but the point is that we we made the formal protocol request, mm -hmm. and um, it's out there that we that we 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 are not feeling we would like an audience. Yeah. As intra-regional travel woes continue and heads of government seek to fill the void left by Liat 1974, Howard said the model of the airline was a good one, but it needed better management. The infrastructure was there. The staff was is high, was highly trained. They had, have, they, had, they had all the, the routes. People don't realize they had, they had, I still think they had have route rights for even Canada mm -hmm. and Jamaica. And Jamaica. And Jamaica. Yeah. They had have route rights there. Right. Um, so basically, the model is post perfect. At one time, we used to go to 26 destinations. Liat's issue was basically the management and I would say the political, um, the political mm -hmm. influence. Mm -hmm. um, it was unfortunate. I think the, be the, the best model going forward, again, is a private sector, government um, shares, ownership, and let, let it be driven by the market forces. Just before the collapse, what was going to be introduced was what you call MRGs. It means minimum revenue guarantees. There was actually a joke in that in one of the meetings where the Prime Minister said, that's as my arrival and gas stand. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was really that was really amusing because yeah. that was they were they, they, all three was in that meeting basically and um, minimum revenue guarantee basically says that okay we could operate this flight into your country um, but we need a certain amount of load we, we need a certain amount of passengers you know in order to come if we can't meet that then you'll have to you'll have to there are some, there's a formula we calculate it right. where the government will have to subsidize. Subsidize. Mm -hmm. 
So that was actually just about to come on stream, and we think that was the best model because um, we were doing it for American Airlines and St. Lucia and in Grenada. We do it for them. But the government subsidized these air, air, airlines, so the, the argument was why we can't do it for our own. Mm -hmm. And then, in addition to that, um, the, the baggage chart of I think is 10 years was just about going to be implemented. The truth of the matter is just before layout, um, COVID and layout collapse, in my personal opinion, we were on the verge of really turning around the airline. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we're just about to run the verge. So Howard said another impediment that affected the progress of LIAT 1974 Limited was the influence of some of the workers' groups. That's a reality. I mean, I have my, they are my colleagues. Mm -hmm. All the workers in the various, region, various islands are my colleagues. Right. But the truth of the matter is um, the influence of some of the worker groups mm -hmm. really retarded the A-line mm -hmm. and was an impediment to progress. Um, with hindsight, I show we would have regretted some of the positions that somebody had, no position that we took. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, um, we couldn't go forward with some of these um, rigid contracts, I would say. Okay. And uh, so it was, it was a situation where the airline something, something had to give, mm -hmm. and COVID provided that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's just as I still think it was handling the wrong way. Yeah, but 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 isn't isn't it? Um, fair to say also that, that the, the, the institution had old workers for quite a while and, and they had been agitating for what was due in previous periods. Oh, yes. Not just that they, and, and I, I suppose you could explain that agitation by that fact that, that they had been owed sub, sub, substantial you amounts see, prior to, to those had. When you have a deficiency in management, you create yeah. animals. And layout in itself created that kind of culture, the management itself. If you're weak in management in certain, in certain places, mm -hmm. you know, you live in a vacuum, in some cases for abuse. Mm -hmm. And I, I think in some cases, um, um, it was, I, I think in some cases, workers overstepped their authority in some cases, I would be honest with you. Mm -hmm. and, but that was because of the weakness of the same management. Mm -hmm. you know, but when you know that airlines are sensitive and um, so critical to travel, um, and in some case, you could have, um, you know, workers pulling the plug on you. You have to keep your trailer. Mm -hmm. But the main right. problem is it was the management of the airline right. that brought it to that. But the management is guided by a board. Addressing the issue of severance payment for former LIAT workers here in SVG, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez on radio on Sunday said in 2020 he explained to the head of the LIAT Workers Union that the government was unable to do anything about severance until the administrator indicated in a definitive way the things which LIAT 1974 Limited cannot, cannot do and authoritatively for the administrator to sign off on what will be the workers entitlement if Liat was not insolvent. The company is closed. The company is insolvent. I was trying to tell the workers this all the time. And I'm not talking about the workers here, particularly the pilots and some engineers, well, some pilots, some engineers, some other persons who were not understanding the pressure that Liat was under and continued with some practices which were inimical to the company's welfare and and some demands which were inimical to the welfare. Eventually, Liat went the way of all flesh. And I'm awaiting, I've written, I'm awaiting final, what is the final position of the administrator in relation to all the matters. I had said that the government will give consideration to making um, whatever reasonable payments we may be able to make ex gratia because there's, there's not a legal right. And we see in the case of Antigua and Barbuda, Antigua, the Antigua government offered the Liat workers in Antigua. Um, 50% of what they would otherwise be entitled to if the company was not insolvent. PM Gonzalez said he is prepared to meet with a delegation of the workers' union sometime after the Easter holiday, noting that all commitments made to Liat workers still stands. They have not written to me about an audience, as far as I'm aware, since um, 
since 2020. I can't recall any any letter other than since 2020. What I do know, the leadership of the of the union um, sought to play partisan politics just before the 2020 elections. I don't have that against the workers at all, and I cannot. And the commitment that I gave, it still stands, but I want to have. And I'm prepared to meet a, a delegation of the Liat workers, the, the former Liat workers, any time. But let the record also show that if you have something to write the prime minister about, you'd, you'd, write, you'd write a letter to the press. You tell me it's in such light. <laughs> yes. huh? so no, 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 so, no, no, so no, 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 you, 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 they, 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 no. You, you read what they, I, when they did in 2020, I called the, 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 the gentleman who is the, who is the, who is the, 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 the at that time, the president of, of, of the Liat workers. I don't know if he's still president. I don't know if the union is functioning. I don't know if the union is functioning. I don't know if the reports have been submitted to the to the Labour Commission as to their functioning as required under the law. I don't know. But I'm prepared to meet um, a delegation of the 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 workers. PM Gonzalez noted that St. Vincent and the Grenadines played a crucial role in LIAT as a shareholder government from two thousand and one to twenty twenty. In other news now, we hear that the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Union, the Police Welfare Association and the Public Service Union held a joint Thanksgiving service last Friday, March 31st, at the Wilson Hill New Testament Church of God under the theme, Our God is Greater. The service comes weeks after the High Court ruled in the union's favor against the government in the vaccine mandate case. Addressing the Thanksgiving service, opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday said he admired the courage of the affected workers in standing up for their principles. Senior education. It could not have been easy, can't be easy because it continues to be 15 months without your job, without an income, to catch a sketch can as they say, and it continues. But you remain firm and I want to say to the leaders of the unions as well, and the public, the Police Welfare Association, to the legal representatives, I admire your courage as well for standing for your rights and to do so peacefully within the bounds of our legal system, within the law, as we are required to do. And whereas the government, it has been proven by the court went way beyond the powers that were given to them by legislation and by the Constitution in taking actions that took away your bread, in forcing members to choose between your body and your bread. Nobody should be put in that position. So when you stand up, others should do so with you. I would have liked for this church here today to be filled for the process actions on the street, the pickets, the demonstration, whatever you wish to call it, the solidarity march to be filled with people who support you in your stance that you took and who opposed the draconian measures that the government introduced that caused so much pain and hardship. There comes a time when standing up means that you actually physically have to stand up. The opposition leader said he knows that the vast majority of workers in the country, even though they are not showing it openly, support the affected workers and their unions and celebrated when the decision of the High Court came back in their favor. It is time for people to go back to work. It is time for people to be recognized for what they can do and to be allowed to do it. The taxpayers who are funding legal actions against those people who have been put out of a bread. They don't want government to spend their money on that. So, I believe that the majority of the people in this country are with you, stand firm. We are with you and we will stand firm. Your theme today, God is greater. It gives us hope that even now, that the right thing will be done 
and the contribution that the workers have made over the years will be acknowledged, that their value to our society acknowledged, that they be returned to work where the court said they never left, with all benefits intact. And yes, it will take some time to recover from what must have been a very painful blow for persons who have given so much. And one day you are the hero, and the next day you are discarded as though you are replaceable by someone who has just come out of high school. But the country needs you, and I know that you want to make your contribution. And the sooner we get to that place, it's the better for all of us. But the message has to be sent, because the course that we are on now is the wrong one. How do we, rever we reverse it? The people have to send that message. Enough is enough. Also, at a Thanksgiving service, some of the workers who were affected by the vaccine mandate shared their experience on being off the job over a year now. Father Jesus, it has been very difficult. Thing like that. I remember at one point in time, I used to just ask a bathroom break, just go in the bathroom and just let it go. And I would say, Father Jesus, just because of a vaccine, just because I didn't take a vaccine, all of this, what this is really for. And I know if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't have been here today. Sometimes I'll come down. I'll feel, I'll feel sick. And I will get the support of like my friend. I, and I must say, I thank God for each and every day is a blessing for me and for every one of us who are unvaccinated, whether being vaccinated or not. Because everybody made their choice. I made mine, so people are supposed to respect my choice, just as well as they respect their choice. And I must say, Jesus, you've done it again. Jesus, you've done it again. You always take care of me when I don't deserve it. And I must say thank you and God bless everyone. I do not believe our experience is a mistake. I believe it had to have happened this way so that we would realize that God is our answer, not man. No man will ever be our answer because no matter where that man is, that man is like every one of us, subject to make mistakes and subject to doing things based on his own understanding. And scripture says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. No matter how much book knowledge a man has, if he does not fear God, he is a foolish man. There was none of us that was working. I was the breadwinner in my home. So I took a stand not knowing how we were going to eat. But I know that every one of us have a testimony. And it was during this period that the scripture became alive in my heart. It was during this time that the word of God came, came home to me. Many are the plans of the, uh, in a man's heart. But if the Lord does not prevail, if the Lord does not give way to it, they can prosper. Out of evil come it good. And I want to thank God for everything that we went through that today we can stand. We can stand victorious. April 18, 2023 is said to have been set aside by the court to address the government's legal team application for a stay of execution on the judgment of the High Court, which ruled in favor of the public sector unions deeming the government's COVID-19 vaccine, which affected hundreds of the nation's public sector workers who were deemed to have abandoned or resigned from their jobs for failing to take the COVID-19 vaccine as unconstitutional, unlawful and void. <music> We hear that the Ministry of National Mobilization and Social Development today officially launched Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month at a ceremony held at the French's house. The month of activities is being observed under the theme, You Have the Power to Create a Better Future for Us, the Children Treat Us Well. Delivering remarks at the launching ceremony, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Mobilization, Marissa Finch-Burke, said that over 150 reports of child abuse were recorded here last year of 190 reports were reported last year of child abuse in st vincent and the grenadines one too many yes we have had higher numbers in previous years but it is still one too many that is why we are asking all of us as adults to treat our children well. 
We have had in 2022, 43% of the reports of child neglect. Now, child neglect is always hardest to prove, but it is the one that is always underestimated because that is the one where a parent could actually not show love to you or they are leaving you without supervision. It could be a myriad of things. But 43% due to neglect. We also had 30% due to physical abuse. It therefore means that a child may have reported or a parent or a t another parent or another teacher or the hospital, the health system may have reported where the child has been beaten. Finchberg reminded the audience of the importance of creating positive role models for the nation's children. Treat the children well. And when we say well, it is about investing in their, their development, investing in their future, investing in their present, spending the time, quality time. And it's not just about as parents, even in our different environments, whether it is children spend the most of their time at school. So obviously teachers, nurses, etc., come into contact with our children as well. Persons who care for, for children are also, we also have to remind them. So I know that I, I don't wish to be longer, but I wanted to stress the importance of this month of activities. Now, as much as it is a month internationally celebrated, we need to do this every month where we are reminding the public with regards to treating our children well. The PS further added that a mentorship program for boys will be launched later this week as part of activities being held to commemorate Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. Tomorrow, the ministry continues this exercise by having another launch. But this launch is going to be about a Big Brothers mentorship program. Now, we know that sometimes males as adults, males as boys, also become marginalized or they feel they are neglected in our society. So if we don't make the necessary provisions for boys, to be provided with appropriate and positive role models, it means that their future becomes at a higher risk for positive development. So we are launching at the Liberty Lodge Boys Training Center tomorrow, please God, at 9 a.m. We will be launching our Big Brothers Mentorship Program. It's more or less a camp experience and we will be matching every boy with a mentor. It is very important in the development of the lives of our young boys. At today's ceremony, children from various schools across the country were in attendance and shared their talents with a message of stopping child abuse and protecting the nation's children. The ministry has a number of activities planned for the month, culminating on April 30th. After an absence of three years due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the eruption of Lasso Freire Volcano, the traditional Palm Sunday blessing of the Palm Ceremony was held at the Central Market in capital Kingston, followed by a procession on Sunday, April 1st, 2023. The activities form part of the Holy Week celebrations in which Vincentians are being encouraged to remember the three pillars, the commandment of love, the commandment of God, and the commandment to love love our neighbors. Here is a snippet of the Palm Sunday Blessing Ceremony at the Central Market in Capital Kingston last Sunday.
And on the police beat program last evening discussing the significance of the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is it being diminished in today's society? Reverend Adolph Davis, who now serves as the superintendent minister of the Methodist Church in Tobago, was a panelist via Zoom, said it is evident that a majority of criminals in society today come from a broken home, and the Bible must be used as a foundation to aid in repairing families and so sometimes when we invest a lot of the money trying to get more guns and more police and all of that perhaps we need to take more time using the bible as our foundation to say hey what we need to spend more time trying to repair family rebuild family help to construct better homes because the criminals start from a home no, why all of this connects to resurrection? Because that's the fundamental part of who we are as Christians, and not just as Christians, as human beings. Because if there is no resurrection from the dead, Paul argues that in in, in 1 Corinthians 15, mm -hmm. if there is no resurrection from dead, mm -hmm. every single one of us are breathing the breath of life in vain. Yes. Because imagine if when you live, you're just dead and done, then there's nothing real to live for. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ affirms for us that life is more than life to death. Mm -hmm. That there is life after death. And there's a phenomenon of justice in that. There's a message of hope in that, which is why the hymn writer says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, etc. Reverend Davis said with an increased secularization of the world, persons tend to reject anything godly or Christ or Christian-like, which can also be attributed to the church. So I, I, I simply put, I don't know that anybody disbelieves the, the, the story, the life and the history of Jesus mm -hmm. with evidence. I think it's an it's a attitude towards religion and faith more than... Uh, anybody taking history seriously because you know um all the persons who take history seriously will will find sufficient sound concrete historical evidence of the the life and teaching and death and all of that of jesus so that most persons who deny the the, the story of jesus's life uh, do so without much serious research but do so with an attitude towards religion and and sadly in part because um for a number of persons they've had several bad experiences of church and religion and so they become bitter so their position is more emotive mm -hmm. than informed intellectually you know and historically Guest pastor at the Calvary Evangelistic Assembly, Ruth Constance, said persons should reflect in deep thoughts and be grateful for the, sac the significance of Jesus' death and resurrection and use the Holy Week to give God praise instead of focusing on commercial activities. So the homage is not there. There's this shame mockery. And you yourself, ASP, brought it to this whole week, this whole week when we should be, you know, reminiscing, when we should be giving God his glory and his thanks and really, you know, going into deep thoughts about about all that happened and, yes. and, and be grateful to what ha will have happened. We're using the opportunity, as you say, to commercialize, to bring on the fit, the parties. There were fears in my time. When I say fair, the um, school fairs and all of that, that we will go to and it will be that time to, you know, wine and dine and jam, as we will say, and uh, all of that. And so we have missed the mark by not celebrating this Holy Week as we should. And um, we have failed, you know, to bring and to steer the ship into that direction, perhaps as a church, perhaps as a nation, as we will have called ourselves. Because sometimes we ourselves as organizations, you know, as um, government agencies, we are guilty of that fact. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to agree we have, we have diminished it. We have um, allowed the, the cross to look so insignificant and we need to make sure that we bring that back.